Hi, I'm Arthur, genealogy librarian at Greensboro Public Library. I'd like to introduce you to a database of particular interest to those researching African-American family history. It is one of the dozen component parts of Heritage Quest Online, and its name is plain and descriptive, United States Freedmen's Bank Records, 1865 to 1874. Usually shortened to the Freedmen's Bank, was established by act of the federal government after the Civil War and at the beginning of Reconstruction. It was independent of the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands, AKA the Freedmen's Bureau, but was established in similar spirit and for overlapping reasons. In time, both institutions floundered because of Southern hostility, Northern indifference, and federal government neglect and abandonment. The Freedmen's Bank evolved into a system of 37 offices in 17 states where recently emancipated peoples could make deposits. The need for such a thing was due to white banks' refusal to accept African Americans as depositors. In time, of course, alternatives evolved, but during Reconstruction, for many black families, a Freedmen's Bank office was the only alternative to cash under the mattress. Tragically, mismanagement and outright corruption caused the bank's failure, and many depositors were only able to recover 62 cents on the dollar. This event is thought to be a contributing factor in African American distrust of financial institutions, especially in the couple generations after the Civil War. In terms of genealogical research, surviving Freedmen's Bank records are a potential trove of information about ancestors who are otherwise sometimes difficult to document. There were only about 70,000 depositors, which is a small fraction of African Americans at the time. However, many of the records list family members, so the total number of named individuals is close to half a million overall. Only three of the 37 branches were located in North Carolina, and all three of those were well east of Guilford County, in New Bern, Wilmington, and Raleigh. If you are researching a Piedmont family, the odds of finding an ancestor in these records is statistically slim. Still, there were depositors from further west, including in Guilford, and the potential level of detail in the records is impressive enough to be worth taking a look. It will really only cost you a few minutes to check. The information in the database comes from the registers of signatures of depositors. It's a form that a depositor filled out when they first opened an account. The bank records don't follow the depositors through the years. It's just a snapshot of that one moment in time. The range of information on that form is quite wide. Some entries include nothing more than the name of the account holder, their town of residence, and the date the account opened. At the other end of the spectrum, some records include details that are really helpful genealogically speaking, or that can be nearly impossible to find elsewhere. In addition to the standard name, residence, and date, you might also find physical descriptions, such as age, height, and complexion, family members, most often parents, siblings, and children, or occupation, residence at birth, and previous other residences. Compared to most records genealogists tend to use, that's potentially a lot of information in one fell swoop. Again, these records don't cover a huge number of individuals, and they are not evenly distributed geographically, but it could be a real windfall if you're lucky enough to have an ancestor in them.